Hi, this is Sally Draper and I'm here on sites.google.com to show you a quick overview of what it's like to create a church intranet using Google Sites. Uh, this is just one of the methods I'm going to demonstrate in this video. Uh, this one is um, actually creating a website to kind of display your content. So uh, on sites.google.com there's a red icon down in the lower uh, right corner of the page and when you click on that you can create a new site. This will be with the new Google Sites as opposed to the classic sites. There's an icon in the lower left corner if you want to go back to classic sites and create it using classic sites. Uh, I'll just quick demo uh, creating a new site. Click on the red plus sign and you basically are on a website and you can start creating there and it is untitled so you can get rid of the untitled site title and give it a name. Maybe we're going to call it Sample Church Intranet. And you can also uh, name your page. That Sample Church Intranet shows up at the top. You can also name your page. Maybe you just want to call it, um, maybe you want to name it something a little bit less geeky, like, um, I'll call it Training Lutheran Church Admin Site because it's kind of an administrative type site and that might make more sense to people to call it something like that. And so we'll change the name up here to match that. Maybe we'll call it TLC for short, Training Lutheran Church Admin Site. And you'll notice that you have the option to um, add a logo. And you can find a logo on your um, local computer and upload it to the site. And you can also edit this since it filled in something. We'll call it TLC Admin Site. Probably one of the first things you're most concerned with is, um, you know, appearance. Everybody likes things to look nice. You can get kind of bogged down in uh, appearance, but let's go ahead and do a little bit of touch up of that. This black looks kind of dreary. So we'll do a uh, change image and select an image because they have a lot available to us. So we can just pick something that that looks um, nice, generally um, nice and goes well with our colorings and things. Maybe I'll go with the blue dots. And um, let's see, from my logo, I can also select a color to use for the theme. So I can pick something that matches my logo. And also there's a themes tab over here on the right where I can pick different versions of it. Um, and that logo color shows there. If We want to apply that um, for font colorings and things like that. And I think we have probably done enough. Maybe if I make this a little uh, less skinny, wider, I'm sorry, a little wider so that it doesn't wrap to two lines. And then as I move things around, it's pretty easy to see how things are centered and such. I think I can do that. There you go. That looks pretty centered. All right, so I have a little bit of a design for my admin site. And now I probably want to work on the, the structure of the site. To add pages to the site, I'm going to use the plus sign down here to add a new page. And the new page could be titled, for instance, groups. And this is, there is an advanced option where you can put in a, like a custom URL, but otherwise we just click done and it adds groups. And you'll notice it starts to build a top menu and shows um, the pages there. So maybe another major um, page would be worship because we're going to put worship resources out here. So I'll click done. Now if I'm interested in building sub pages um, such as under groups, maybe I want a page for the council. I can do that um, by simply adding the page and dragging and dropping it under a page and then I can tell it to make it 
a sub page. Let's see if I can do that right here. If I drop it on the word groups, then that makes it a sub page under groups. And you'll notice the menu expanded to include a sub menu. We could continue to um, add sub pages right here under groups. We can say add sub page. Uh, maybe we want to have one for ladies aid. And perhaps we want a sub page under worship for um, altar guild. So pretty easy to build out your menu system, adding pages and sub pages. And you can see that it automatically creates the menu based on that. To navigate around, you can just use that menu to get back to the main page or whatever. Um, let's say we want to edit the main page, then that's where we're going to use the insert option over here on the right. And we can insert a particular layout um, where it's easy to just add a picture and uh, add text. Maybe we want to say, welcome to the TLC admin site. And use the top menu to navigate to your desired page. To add an image, just click and you'll be given the options to upload or choose it from Drive or YouTube or your calendar. Um, you can go to your downloads folder and easily grab a picture of your church, for instance, whatever folder you have it saved in and put an image there on your page. You can add other things to your site. Uh, there's different layouts, of course, but there's also buttons and dividers. There's the ability to put in uh, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, Charts, all different uh, things on your site. And you can just add a text box if you want. And in that text box, perhaps you want to, you know, link to your Google Drive. So there's a master link there. You can add links just by typing text and clicking the link and whatever that link is, you can add links within the site or you can just put in a link by copy and pasting or typing it in. And uh, I'll just demonstrate real quickly the ability to add a calendar, for instance. So maybe you want the Christian Worship Lectionary calendar and you want to insert that. And you can decide what size and what format. Let's say it's um, a monthly format and you don't want to show the title, you can choose all different things. You can also just drag the handles to make it bigger on your page. And um, you can rearrange things or whatever you want. That's a little overview of how working on Google Sites works. When you're happy with your site, you want to focus on getting it published and the sharing settings. So um, first you're going to do sharing. And here's where you can share who can edit, basically, and who can see it when it's published. So who can edit, um, you can set up specific people to have privileges on the site. And then who can see it when it's published you can change that to specific people can view when published. And then you would add people um, by putting in their email address. So the people you want to be able to access a site will need a Google account in order to add them. So perhaps, um, you know, I want to share with this with someone in my congregation named Sally Draper, then I can say they, that person can edit or that person can view when published and just be able to see um, the information on the site. Depends on who you need to do what. And as long as you change this published setting to um, specific people can view, then that's going to keep it from, from being out on the World Wide Web when it's published.
So you choose between what what you want them to be able to do, edit or view it once it's published. And then if you want, you can add a notification to them. But um, that should do it once you have those security settings in place. Then when you click publish, you know that the, the site is going to be private except for those who can view when published. And you can send them an email and you can manage that from this screen as well. It's just the key is you need to change it from the default settings. So uh, once you're happy, you have to put in a web address. Happy with the web address. And Google will check and see if it's available. And then you can click Publish. And when the site is published, then you'll be able to view the published site and see it without all the different editing things, just with the information you've put on the site, the menu you've, you've built, uh, the ability to search. Okay, folks, I'm shifting gears a bit. We're going to talk a little bit about how you can just use Google Drive to set up an internet. Now, to use Google Drive, you have to have a Google account. You go to drive.google.com. And uh, basically, you can create things here. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to create a new folder. You can click on New, and there's all kinds of options of things you can create in Google Drive, including folders. And so I think the first step for you is to create a folder structure to house uh, the documents and files and things that you want to collaborate on in Google Drive. And so uh, we will have a link in the show notes, show 588, wellstech.wells.net, episode 588. Um, and it will link you to this sample church intranet um, set of folders that we've set up to give you an idea of what you can do. So when you come into the sample church intranet folder, if you double click, you'll see the subfolders and files that we've created below there. And for the most part, these folders here that are listed, events, groups, records, and worship, those are just there to give you some ideas of how you might organize your folders. So you could do the exact same thing, create folders labeled this. Um, and we even added subfolders. So under events, you'll find things like Christmas for Kids and Mission Festival. You can use the breadcrumbing here above the file listing to go back a level. And look under groups, you'll see things like council, ladies aid, outreach, property, etc. So we just set these up to give you an idea of what you could add as your folder structure. Now, once you get into a particular folder, uh, maybe it's the choir folder. Um, this is where you're going to use the, the new button and you're going to add Google Documents or Google Sheets or Google Slides. Or if you have uh, files on your own computer, you can just drag and drop them here to upload them to this folder. And other people with access would be able to see them. So we didn't do any of those kind of sample documents. The only documents you're going to find are out here at the highest level. And what we set up was a sample church intranet index and links document that links to all those different folders. Just to give you an idea of how you might um, set up links to the different folders. And maybe you just drive people to this one page. And if they're looking for the choir link, they would find that under worship and they could click and get to that choir folder, just like we did through the folder structure. So this is just kind of a pretty way to set that up and make it easy for everyone. And also a good thing that you can link to maybe from your main church site. Um, given that it's not going to be public, once they click on the link to get to this file, uh, they're going to have to have the right Google login to be able to have access. Uh, another file that we put here just has some basic help information about maintaining permissions, sharing the content with the right people. And uh, that's very, very important that uh, the site isn't public. You have to actually um, make an effort to keep the right people having access to the right things. And you can be very granular about it. So you could share just a particular document with someone. Or for instance, under groups, um, we had things like council and elders. So maybe you would only share this folder with that select group of elders in your congregation. And other people that aren't shared with um, wouldn't be able to access it. So how do you go about that sharing? Uh, that's the icon that looks like a head and shoulders. That's your share icon. 
Alternatively, if you want to right click on a folder or a file, there's always going to be a share option in the right click menu as well. Both take you to the same place. And this is where uh, you can say who has to, who can view and you might want to leave it where anyone doesn't have access. I have it set this way so you guys can see this folder structure. But when you create your own, you might want to just say um, certain people have access and you could type in their Google email address so um, or their name and find them that way with their Google email addresses. And then, you know, you can control whether they can just view the files in this folder or whether they can actually add and edit and organize the files in this folder or this file that you're given permission to. And so, like I said, um, back at the main level where the sample folders are list are, there is this document that has um, links to the Google help resources and an overview video on setting up sharing or permissioning um, your Google Drive folders. So again, uh, use our sample church intranet folder as a, a guide and then go into your own Google account and create new folders that fit your congregation and then set up the sharing for those folders. Hope that all makes sense and uh, let us know how your church intranet is developing.